One of the earliest decisions you'll have to make in building a startup team is whether to be a one founder company or a company with multiple co-founders. In today's video, I'll talk about some of the things you might want to consider in making that decision. What exactly do we mean when we say co-founders? Well, a co-founder is typically a very early team member. They're probably primarily compensated with equity. There may be some financial compensation if a company is in a position to do that, but it's very common for co-founders to really start out primarily with equity compensation and nothing else. And that compensation, of course, is in the form of founder stock. Now, founder stock is typically just common stock. And at the beginning, of course, it's the co-founders, or if a single founder, the, the one founder, that owns all the stock in the company. And co-founders are taking a big risk. They're joining the company very, very early. So in return for that risk, they're receiving their ownership in the company. And it's usually a fairly substantial ownership. What does the one founder scenario look like? Well, of course, by definition, it means there's one person who's the sole founder of the company. And instead of bringing on co-founders, that person brings on employees, contractors, and outsource partners. Now, what that means is that single founder needs to be compensating employees and contractors and outsource partners, probably with money as opposed to purely with stock. There may be some stock options that they use to sort of sweeten the pot and allow employees, contractors, and outsource partners to participate in the future success of the company. But generally, if they're not providing a large uh, stock position, it means they really are having to pay salaries to employees and some kind of fee to contractors or outsource partners. It's possible to try to pay contractors and outsource partners just in stock but I would argue it's usually not a great idea. If you're paying somebody with stock, you're going to be at the bottom of their priority list. They'll put a higher priority on anybody who's paying them cash. And what frequently happens is you see the performance is, is terrible, that typically, very typically, you simply don't get what you expected to get. Say if you use, for example, an outsource partner that you're compensating entirely in stock, it may take a long time for them to get your product development done. Because again, anybody who approaches them with cash will probably be higher in their priority queue. So what are the advantages of being a one founder company? Well, clearly control is, is one advantage. It's very clear that the founder owns initially at least 100% of the company, and maybe a little less as they perhaps have to allocate some to a stock option pool. But clearly they own the vast majority of the stock and they have clear control of the company. There's also a very clear vision. If there's a single founder who owns the vast majority of the company, you don't have conflicting visions uh, in the leadership team. It's pretty clear what direction the company is going. So those are all advantages. But there are also some drawbacks. If you're building a company by adding employees and contractors and outsource partners, that involves some expense. So you have to have the funds available to be able to pay for that. And there's also a fair amount of pressure. I mean, when you are the sole majority shareholder in a company and you're the vision person, you are clearly the one in charge, that is a lot of pressure and you don't exactly have uh, much of an inner team that you can share uh, the challenges with and strategize with. So it can be a pretty lonely job. From a practical point of view, in order to get investor funding, you do need to show that you can build a team before most investors will be willing to write you that check. So it's not as if you can depend on investor funding to build that team of employees and contractors and so forth. You probably need the financial resources to do that before you get uh, much in the way of investor funding. So what does the co-founder scenario look like? Well, of course, basically means you have two or more founders, uh, two or more people that are in very early and who have a probably primarily, maybe exclusively equity compensation at the beginning. Now, in some cases, you'll start with a single founder who then brings in, you know, one or two or more co-founders. Sometimes you start out with a group of people who come up with an idea, bat it around, do some brainstorming, and decide to go ahead and form a company as a team. So you have co-founders right from the very beginning. And of course, a lot of the time you'll have some co-founders who are maybe only able to commit part-time because they, they need to maintain a day job for some income, and perhaps others who are able to work on it full-time. So 
co-founding teams of very early on come in, in all kinds of varieties. So what are the advantages of going the co-founder route as opposed to the single founder or the sole founder route? Well, there's the possibility that it will save cash, and that may be cash that you actually don't have early on, so uh, it's certainly a good thing to reduce your expenses. If you have co-founders who have the ability to work uh, without any income, just purely for stock, then clearly that's going to save you in cash flow early on. You also get a group of people who have ownership in the company, and with that comes some commitment and hopefully some passion, some real focus on making the company successful. Plus, of course, when you have co-founders, you're bringing in skills and experience and diverse perspectives earlier than you may have been able to afford if you had to bring them in as employees and pay them. Uh, of course, additional skills, experience, diverse perspectives, those are all good things uh, for increasing the likelihood of your startup being successful. Of course, you also have just more organizational bandwidth. You have more hours in the day, more people to do work, uh, more people to share in all of those tasks that are uh, to be done, so you'll get more done. And beyond that, there's just a general camaraderie. You have a group of co-founders, you're all sort of in the same boat, uh, pushing the same direction, and at least it's a little less lonely than being a sole founder. What are the disadvantages of having co-founders as opposed to just one sole founder? Well, you can have the question of who is in charge. It is in a startup always important I would argue, to have someone who is in charge, someone who is the decision maker. And if you have a lot of people who all have a major equity stake in the company, that can be a little less clear unless you make it clear right up front. And you can have disagreements about the equity ownership, about who should get how much of the company. And those disagreements can result in some bad feelings that can cause problems down the road if you don't deal with them up front and take the time to be sure that you get to what everybody believes is a fair equity arrangement. The other challenge with co-founders is they're starting out very early. They may be in a very responsible role that might change over time. It could be that you know perhaps this person is the right lead developer uh, in the company early on, but eventually you might need a VP of engineering, let's say, and that person just might not be the right person for that role. So at some point, they're no longer the technical person in charge. It's good to set expectations early on as to what the, the long-term role options might be for a, a co-founder. Of course, the other challenge is you might end up having a co-founder that just is a bad fit, that doesn't fit with a team or, or is not able to do the job. Maybe you can't really find a role that really does fit their skill set in the company. And that creates, of course, a problem for the CEO. Uh, when you have just a, a bad fit in the team, that's something that you need to fix. And if there's no role that does fit them, you fix it by moving the person out of the company. Well, that's something you have to think about up front as you're structuring the company and as you're creating your your ownership arrangements, the stock ownership arrangements, arrangements with your co-founders. You don't want somebody to walk off with a big ownership in your company if they simply aren't working out and you have to ask them to leave. So they're really not going to be there to help create the value in the company you don't want them to walk off with a big chunk of the company. So that's an important thing to work through early on when you're doing the whole stock ownership uh, discussion. A few tips in terms of selecting and bringing on board co-founders. I really would suggest you avoid equal shares of stock. You do want to have somebody clearly in charge. Uh, on the other hand, you need to be sure that the way stock is divvied up is seen as being fair and equitable or it will cause problems. Who do you need as co-founders? Well, it's a question of what skills and experience and background you need. What are the key capabilities that you'll need to accomplish the next couple of milestones that the company needs to accomplish? Uh, it's important to set role expectations up front and the idea that the role today may be a different role tomorrow. And avoid title inflation. I mean, if, if somebody isn't really a VP level person, you don't necessarily have to give them a VP level title, maybe director uh, or lead or some other title is more appropriate. 
And when it comes to those equity uh, agreements, make sure you get them in writing. And you probably ought to find some way to vest those founders' shares just in case the fit doesn't work out and they have to exit the company. And you'll need to recover some of the stock that that, uh, that co-founder has. Now, we'll talk a lot more about the whole equity aspect of co-founders in our next video. So the question is, what fits your particular situation? Can you afford to bring on employees and pay them? Or are you really not in a position to do that? And if you're going to build an early team, is really bringing in co-founders who work for stock really the only practical option you have? The question is one that you'll have to wrestle with as to what is the best fit given all the advantages and disadvantages of the, the sole founder versus co-founders. And you get to decide what's the best strategy for your particular company. I guess my bias is more often than not, I think a co-founder strategy makes a lot of sense because it allows you to get more skills, more capability into your company earlier on, probably earlier than you otherwise could have paid for it. If this was helpful, please click the like button, share it, leave a comment, and if you haven't subscribed, please do that and hit that notification bell because as I mentioned, there's more coming up in this series on the startup team. And this will, of course, all be part of a playlist. There's a link to that right here. That's a wrap for this time. Thank you very much for watching.